I want to talk to you about limitation. Because when you, when you find yourself succeeding in business and you come back to square one again after investing a lot of ma money, it is an evidence that there is a yoke of limitation somewhere affecting you. When you find yourself, you are successful in the place of your work. You are successful in your family. But you let alone come back to the same point you were. You don't move forward. It is, a, it is a, it's an evidence of limitation. The yoke of, the yoke of, of limitation, it is associated with the smallness. It is associated with the literal thinking. It is you must enlarge your mind and believe God for greater things in life. Limitation. So I told you you must understand limitation to understand stagnation. The, we, we are going to deal with the, the issue of breaking the yoke of stagnation for your, for your spiritual breakthrough. The spiritual, the, the powers that hold people not to move forward is, is, is stagnation. And I want you to know, you can say, I refuse to be small. I refuse to be small. I refuse to, to remain small in life. I will not remain small in life. I must enlarge myself. I am going to believe God for enlargement. Amen? Are we together with somebody in the house of the Lord? And I want you to know, I want you to know, and I, and I, and I think I mentioned this, I mentioned this, and I said, limitation is, is like, People may think that you are moving, but you are not. You are no, not moving. Those people who go for gym, and I say it again here in the morning devotion I saw, there is something called treadmill. You know treadmill? The one you, you pin there on a computer, and then it starts moving. Then you start going like this. You go, you go, you go. And you become tired, and you sweat. You sweat, you sweat, you sweat, you sweat. But when it starts, it stops. You find yourself, if you come out, you are in the same place. But you are moving. You, 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 there was activities. That is what limitation does. We see you active. We see you in motion. We see you busy. We see you doing things. But you are in the same place. Yeah? We, do, we, we meet you in the same, same, same place. Same, same, same person. Same, same complaining. Same, same, same thing. Because you are, you are under a yoke of limitation. Limitation it doesn't mean that you have refused to move. It is your movement that have been stopped in one position. You have been held in one area. Are we together with you? Somebody say, I refuse to be limited. Are we together with you? Are you getting me? So, those people who know this great American called Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr., in one of his writings, he said, if you can't fly, learn. If you can't learn, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. By, but by all means, keep moving. But by all means, Keep moving. Every believer must keep moving. Hallelujah. You must move in something. You see, if you can't fly, land. If you can't land, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. If, if nothing happened, but by all means, keep, keep moving. Don't remain in one spot. Do something. Be on the move. Don't remain in one place. Have great dreams. Because when you stop moving, you start dying. When you stop moving, you start dying. You, you, whatever you have, start to, to die when you stop moving. And I want to show you 
what God told the children of Israelite in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. And verse, verse, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 6. So I want you to see the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb saying you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Verse 7. Verse 7. What does it say? Turn and take your journey and go to the mountain of the Amorite to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountain and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast to the land of the Canaanite and to the Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Ephraim. Verses 8. Can we read all of verse 1 to 3? See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your father to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to them and their descendant after them. Amen? It doesn't matter how long you have dwelt on limitation. It is time for you to move. Are we together with somebody in the house of the Lord? It doesn't matter how long you have remained in the same mountain. There is a command from God that we must break limitation for us to keep moving. Hallelujah. Every success begin with a turn. Every success, it will begin with a what? If you go back to verse 6, go back, back to verse 6, look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, what, what does it say? Yeah, go to verse 7, verse 7, the first sentence. Verse 7, what does it say? Turn. Hallelujah. Did you hear what, what, they were, what the children of Israel were told? I have told you that every success begins with a turn. And every turn will result into a turn aloud. Once you turn, there will be a turn aloud to the glory of God. He told them, turn. Turn and take your journey. In other words, refuse to be stagnant. Refuse to be limited. Hallelujah. May God help us. Amen. Somebody receive the grace to break the yoke of limitation. May you receive the grace to break the spirit of limitation. And I want you to know, the Israelite obeyed God and moved. But when you look at Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses 1. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses 1. They were, they, they, the problem came. Can we read all of us? One, two, three. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea as the Lord spoke to me. And we scattered the Mount, Mount Seir for, for many days. Huh? They did what? They went, they moved in circle. They went just around the mountain. And if they had a treadmill, 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 wanaenda kukunywa hiyo maji wanasikia kuna nabii anatabiria watu wanaenda wakazunguka but they were in the same place yet god had given them moses as a prophet to take them to the blood of promise but they started scattering in one place are we together with you yeah then they turned they compassed mount seir for many days for for many days and I say, then we turned back and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea and the Lord, as the Lord had directed, uh, uh, directed me. For a long time, we made our way 
around the hill country of Seyans. Huh? For a long time. Hmm? Wewe unabishana tu na watu. For a long time. Kwa nini mabishano? You move. Amen. You move. And take a step. Let God help you. Remediation will always cause you to remain in the same place with the same argument, with the same reason, without taking another step. You must turn. Your life must move forward. Deliverance Church Mikidani, our life must move forward. And for our life to move forward, we must take a turn. And when we take a turn, we have to refuse to remain in the same position. Hallelujah. Go to verses 2. Go to verses 2. Look at what the Bible says in verses 2. Huh? What does it say? Then the Lord said to me, but I want to say this even before we continue. The yoke of limitation keeps you on one spot. It keeps you on one spot. You are in one spot. You stay in one spot. Anyone who is under the yoke of limitation, he is in one spot. Madeni yare yare. Changamoto zire zire. Vurugu. Unani yarewa. Mikosi. Nooks. Unakuwa wea ni mtu wa nooks. Na mikosi. Na changamoto. Mwaka neda. Mwaka rudi. For many days. And I want you to know, the yoke of limitation keeps you on one spot with issues. With? With issues, regret, pain, anger, discouragement, unforgiveness, bitterness, and hurt. I will repeat. Slowly, I want you to write this thing. These are the things that the yoke of limitation major on. Any person Suffering from limitation. Most of the issues that keep those people in one place. Just because you failed from four exam, you have not forgiven yourself. You have never left the high school. You are now that five years old after 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 like ten years ago, after about fifteen years ago, you did the exam. About twelve years ago. And you are still remembering the English teacher. May God deliver you. Amen. He kama si huyu mwalimu wa English ningekuwa university. Kwa nini hiyo shule ilipeleka watu wengine university wewe ukakosa kwenda? Are we together with you? Because limitation it keep a person in one spot. Amen. At kama si huyu kijana alinidanganya akanisherehesha ningekuwa nimeolewa nimekaa kwa doa yangu. Na kijana anasema kama si huyu msichana alinivuguruga akaniharibu kishwa Are we together with you? Can you see people who are under limitation? I want to tell you, limitation is a spirit. If there is somebody you are accusing for your problem, you are the yoke of limitation. If there is somebody accusing you for limit, for the for their progress, they are the yoke. May God deliver you from the yoke. Yeah. May God deliver you from the yoke. You cannot say, if this company did not waste me, how did the company waste you and it employed you? Are we together with you? If I had gotten, if I had gotten a better pastor, huh? I could be very far. Somebody said limitation. I've told you, limitation keep you in one spot with each number one issues. It will keep you with issues. You are always having issues. Number two, regrets. You have regrets. I don't know why I came to Mombasa. Hmm? In fact, I was to go to US. I don't know how I am in Mombasa. But you are in Mombasa. Even if you don't know how you are here. Why don't you, why, why don't you come to the reality? To reality? One, one time when I was doing, when I was a student at Bethany Christian College and we were doing a class and we were, in a, we were doing a, a course in, psych, in Christian psychology, our, our psychology teacher was called Dr. Osora. 
Dr. Osora told us he was the youngest doctor. He, 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 gave, he, he got his doctor, doctorate at the age of 29. By 29, he was a doctor. He was, he was a very brilliant young man. And Dr. Osora told us that there is something called uh, reality therapy. Reality therapy. That if somebody fears a snake, you take him and, and allow him to touch the snake. When he touches the snake, that fear will die. If somebody fears, he has phobia. Phobia is excessive fear projected toward an object. Phobia is excess fear projected toward an object. There are people who cannot go with the open, open lift. You just go with that person and the lift go up and it come down and they have not died and there is nothing have happened. They are healed from, from that. That is reality therapy. If somebody fears water, you just jump him in the water with some people to save him. And then when he comes out of the water, he realizes, this water has not swallowed anyone. Reality? Tell your neighbor you are in Mombasa, you are not in America. Stay as if you are in Mombasa. Don't stay in America, in Mombasa. Huh? You know, I am supposed to have been in the US, I am supposed to have been in Australia, it's okay. But you are not there, you are here. You just live here. What did I say? I said issues, regrets, pains, anger. Yeah. There are people who are angry for nothing. Anger, discouragement, and unforgiveness, and bitterness, and hurt. Issues, regret, pain, anger, discouragement and forgiveness, bitterness, and heart. People with heart, free yourself from the past and move forward. Bad things happen. There is nothing you can do about it. Bad things happen. People die. People lose their job. People separate. People go through crisis. Amen? Bad things happen. Countries go through war. There are countries they have never known peace. But they're still existing. Huh? Sometimes I look at some very small country in Western Africa. Very small country. They are at war. Even Mali is at war. And it's, it has a football team that is better than our football team in Kenya. They don't have a president. The country have been, had several coups. But they still have football teams. You wonder how this, this thing happened. Because bad things happen. But break from limitation. And I want you to know. And I want you to know. I want you to know that you owe yourself the duty to move forward. The duty to move forward is your personal responsibility. Can you look at your neighbor? Tell you have a personal responsibility to move forward. It is your personal responsibility to move forward. Amen? Get instructed to move forward. Hallelujah. Because if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 2, I want to, I want to, I want to mention something and then we will pray. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses, verses 2 and 3. Verses 2 and 3. Those two verses. Hmm. Look at what the Bible says. Verses 2 say, And the Lord spoke to me saying, Verses 3, You have scattered this mountain long enough turn northward. In other words, you have gone loud and loud with the same issue for too long. Enough is enough. Move forward. Amen? Enough is? Enough is enough. Move forward. Whatever is keeping you down and limiting your destiny will lose its grip in your life today. It will lose its grip in your life today in Jesus' name. Whatever that is keeping you down. And I have come to speak to you in the name of the Lord. I have come as a servant of God to speak to you. That I command every yoke of limitation to be broken in your life. Every yoke of limitation to be broken in your life. The people you think they don't care. The people you think 
they don't pray for you. The people you think, they don't carry your help. I want you today to change your thought and start to move forward. Amen? If they refuse to pray for you, pray for yourself. If they refuse to connect you, connect yourself. If they refuse to help you, help, wake up and help yourself. Amen? Because let every heart, let every anger, let every disappointment, let every unforgiveness that has kept you down for so long be wiped out by the blood of Jesus. Remove things that you're putting in your mind. Whatever will not let you go. Hallelujah. Whatever will not let you go. Can you listen to me very well? Are you listening to me? Whatever will not let you go. It will go on your behalf. In Jesus name. Something must go. There must be a movement. There must be a change. Hallelujah. Limitation keep you in one spot. It will keep you in, in one spot. When we talk of stagnancy or stagnation, stagnation is like a twin brother to limitation. When you find it difficult to move further from where you are for several attempts, then you remain in a state of stagnancy. When you, re when you realize this, that you are not moving forward, you are not moving further, and there are several attempts, you are now stagnant. Are you seeing? Amen? I have told you that limitation, it will keep you in one spot with the issues. But now stagnation, which is, is like a twin brother of the yoke of, of limitation, it is when you, when you realize that you, it is difficult to move further from where you are after several attempts. You have attempted to move, but you cannot move further. Then you remain in the same state. Then we can say you are stagnant. Amen? In limitation, you are making attempt just that you can't break through. Limitation is a life of disappointment. There is a force stopping you like the traffic warden. Limitation is like a traffic warden to stop you. You cannot cross here. You cannot get married this year. You cannot get promoted this year. You cannot, can, business cannot expand. That is what limitation does. Are we together with you? It is still like a traffic warden. It is pushing hard. It will push you back. It will cause you not to move. But now, stagnancy is a, is a position of frustration. Stagnancy is a position of frustration. You are stagnant. You are frustrated. You don't want to move again. It is you who do not. You are stagnant. You can't move. Limitation, you are limited by a force. Stagnation, you, you are frustrated. And now you become stagnant. Umeshoka kweda shure. Tuma goja nitosheke na yo certificate. Every time you want to attempt to go to school, you, you, you can talk. You know people talk. When you meet people making New Year's resolution, you think the world will be, the world will be so great. After two months, the spirit of stagnation, the spirit of what refuses people to achieve their ear resolution is stagnation. It's not limitation. It is a sense of frustration. It's a sense of a sense of frustration. It is a place. Stagnation is a place of giving up. It's a place of it is a state of no motivation. This is what stagnation is. I have told you stagnation or stagnancy is a position of frustration. It is a place of giving up. It is a state of no motivation, no zeal, no fire, no enthusiasm, no motivation, no zeal, no fire, no enthusiasm. Somebody stagnant have no motivation. Is somebody in a state of frustration? 
I'm frustrated. I don't see me, I don't see myself getting married. I don't see myself getting children. I don't see, and, and, and one of the ways you can understand somebody under the spirit of stagnation is by their verbal, by their verbal utterances. Those words you speak, those words you speak, they can work against you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I don't know which word you have spoken this year. Huh? Because there are words you speak, I don't care, even if they don't add my salary. You hear what people they speak? Because stagnancy, it will always produce somebody to speak. And you always look for people to speak to. When people are frustrated, they always look for somebody to touch them. They always look for, for them to explode. When you realize that somebody is, is, is frustrated, don't touch them. Don't answer them. Don't talk to them. Give them a break. Wait until the frustration go down. They come to them. They come to reality therapy. They come to reality. There was a show that was called Reality Show. It was called Reality Show. In KTN, okay. And NTV. Okay. <laughs> reality Show. Yeah. Reality TV. It is show reality thing. So, frustration, stagnation. Somebody, when people are stagnant, when people are stagnant, they are very dangerous. If you meet a pastor that is stagnant, the church have refused to grow. People have refused to give offering. There are no projects that are moving. Members are coming late to church. Sunday school is disorganized. Youth are running away and getting married without weddings. Uh, marriages, husband and wife are fighting. He has cases and cases. And that pastor is frustrated. If you give such a pastor a microphone in a big crowd, he can ban them. He can ban them. I'm telling you. Yeah. Because of the frustration he has gone through. And that is why he God's grace as a man of God.